Can someone fix this? Move it about the circuit chambers? Yeah, we were <laughs> Okay, well, well uh, China does have a very long history. Uh, it also has a very long prehistory. Uh, so if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, the development of Chinese civilization and culture, um, archaeology is your only pathway to that. So a lot of it, uh, historical records, China has a very long history, <laughs> historical recording histories, right? Uh, has a even longer prehistory, and a lot of Chinese culture is also not all been recorded in the historical records, and archaeology can offer you a different perspective on that. And this course that I'm teaching, sometimes I teach also the archaeology of ancient East Asia, uh, this one I teach pretty much uh, every other year, this is what we're going to be doing, and basically covers um, anything from basically the, uh, the earliest arrival of modern humans, well not modern humans, but Han humans uh, in what we know as now in, as China from about two million years ago to uh, the first unification of China under the uh, Qin Dynasty. So pretty much I stop where Dr. Du's uh, traditional China almost picks up. So it's a nice uh, continuity. Uh, now what we think of when we think of China, oh no, this of course doesn't work. <laughs> now what we think of when we think of China uh, mostly relates to uh, something that only appeared about just over 100 years ago. Um, and to understand very much, to better understand the development of Chinese civilization, it's under, important to understand not only the recent history, but the prehistory. <coughs> some of it, I don't even have the whole thing here. Um, I think it's sorry. But has shifted very much. So this is the modern day borders of China, and you see China started very much, what we think of China started around uh, the bed of the Yellow River, and much of the research that has been done has focused on this region. But China has, because of its very geography, its varied climate and social institutions, uh, to understand the development of Chinese uh, culture, you have to understand these dynamics through time. And this is what we do from an archaeological perspective, because a lot of it is not recorded in ancient histories. Um, like I said, we go back even further, uh, and we, we stop pretty much, like I said, with the Qin Dynasty. So we will explore the foundations of China, the old foundations, the very ancient foundations of China in this class. Uh, we also, let's do this this way. And we'll also uh, look at and recognize the changing role of nationalism in development and use of archaeology in China. Uh, from anything from uh, the traditional interest in verifying histories, claiming a, um, claiming a continuity with the distant past, to a preoccupation with national identity and this idea of a core Chinese culture and then spreading to the peripheries, to now a better understanding that it's a multi-regional uh, uh, society that contributed a lot. There's a lot of people from uh, the peripheries of, not necessarily the peripheries of modern day China, but the peripheries of what we think of when we think of the development of China as contributing to Chinese culture. Um, so we're going to focus a lot on some of the most important archaeological sites and, and findings from the recent, uh, especially from the recent uh, 20 or 30 years. Uh, there's been a lot of development, but we'll also explore this from an anthropological perspective as well. So not studying China just for the sake of China, but placing China into a broader um, anthropological perspective. So comparing Chinese civilization and development and some of its components to other civilizations as well. So looking at the origins of humans in China, but also the origins of agriculture, urbanism, the changing role of mortuary rituals, the economy, all the way to the development of early complex societies, the state, and the empire. Um, we'll appreciate, like I said, China's 
many important contribution not only to the archaeology of China and East Asia, but also to uh, world archaeology and cultural heritage in, in general, but also identify contemporary issues, and this is something that I'm adding to the class that I hadn't done before, uh, identifying contemporary issues facing Chinese archaeology and cultural heritage, and this especially in the face of rapid large-scale urbanism and, and uh, Country, uh, county side development. Uh, there's been an increasing importance of, of, uh, of development, uh, uh, urbanism in different parts of China, and there's been a lot of salvage archaeology. The archaeology that we know of China, the history that we know of China, has focused either on the central core area, the central plains, or where these developments, especially on the eastern part of China, have happened. Uh, more and more recently now with the development of other regions within China and, and, and the peripheries of China, we're getting a better, more comprehensive understanding of, of what and actually who contributed to what we think of now as Chinese culture. Okay? Um, and that's sort of the way that I, I, I organize this class. So from the earliest you know, peopling of, of China and East Asia all the way to the development of the First Empire, and looking at all these issues that are relevant from an anthropological perspective uh, about how they compare with other civilizations, uh, other ancient civilizations, including those in Mesopotamia, Egypt, uh, and, and India, in the Indus Valley. Um, if you, um, I need to head out and <laughs> grab my, my daughter from daycare, but if you have questions and would like to, uh, or have some, uh, an interest in this class, you can email me at this uh, email address. You can find information about the course uh, as well on Black um, PopNet. Um, I will be here for another few minutes if you have a couple of questions really quickly, uh, but please don't hesitate to contact me. So I'm with the Department of Folk Studies and Anthropology. Next fall, I will be offering the Archaeology of Ancient China, and probably in a year or a year and a half, I'll expand that to the Archaeology of Ancient East Asia, which includes Japan, Korea, parts of, of northern Vietnam and Mongolia, of course. Okay? Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs>